Russell, AKA Bell and Circuit. So I'm doing a beat breakdown video, two beat breakdown videos actually, uh, this week or in the next week or two, uh, because I made two beats last time in my beat making video. So I decided to break them down separately. Also, I've been getting some questions from some people about my, some of the gear I'm using and some of my techniques. And so I thought I would do a little bit deeper dive into doing the horn sample chops. I used my Akai MPK Mini for that. Uh, very inexpensive MIDI controller. I think they're about a hundred bucks or something. Um, this one I like quite a bit because it has, uh, has a lot of stuff. It has all the rotary knobs, the pads, keyboards, obviously, uh, pitch bend. Um, I don't know. For, for, my, for my skill level as a keyboardist, it's perfect. Um, so we're going to be getting into that coming up right now. All right, so first uh, element of the drums that comes in is this kind of skittering um, beat, and this is what it sounds like. So this came off that DJ Battle record that I sampled, and it's the same pattern essentially as the main drum beat, um, but it's uh, filtered heavily to give it a little bit more of a breakbeat uh, sound. Then the main drum beat comes in here. And it's really cool and I just like it just the way it was. But as we get further along, um, you can see that I just basically cut and pasted, put some, moved some snares around into other places that uh, sounded a little more interesting. You can see where those slices are, where I just manually cut and pasted them in. So that's it for the drums. Then everything else is just horn samples off of this lounge record. And I used the horn samples in three different ways. Uh, the first one is that I just let the entire sample play. Um, it's a eight bar loop with this halftime plugin, uh, which is pretty cool. Though the entire eight bar sample played through with the halftime plugin, it sounds like this. The second way that I use the horns is just grabbing one or two bar loops. So you can see here, if I move my dumb face out of the way, um, you can see here that I've just grabbed, uh, looks like the last two bars here, the two bars before that here and so forth and here I'm just like grabbing a single bar um, so you get again the the halftime plug is on it here so you get something like that and goes into a different slice so that's the second way I use it third way I use it is I put the sample into a simpler and then essentially play it on the pad so that and we'll go over that in a second here but um, you get things that sound like this and then another pattern And that's really all there is to it. So let's go over 
how we uh, do those chops. So this is the sample that we're working with. So simply right click on that, say slice to new MIDI track. Yeah, in this case I'm slicing one per bar and that way I get eight slices. Preserve warp timing, yes, and then hit OK. And then what happens is you get a, another channel and it's created a drum rack and stick, stuck eight slices in there for you. In order to play this, um, we can get rid of the clip that it actually um, creates because it's just playing the same melody just in order. We don't care about that. We'll delete that. Uh, there's a couple things that we need to do to make this work. First of all, I'm going to drag these slices uh, up so that they're in a different position because that just makes it easier to work with my controller. And we need to make sure that we put these all in the same choke group, which means that when you hit a new slice, it will cut off the one that's previously playing. Otherwise, they'll overlap and can sound weird and or shitty. So I'll turn the attack all the way down so it kicks in right away. Um, and sustain all the way up, release all the way up, the decay all the way up. So we can hook up our MIDI controller and I'll show you how to do those chops. So now we have the samples in the drum rack and we have them mapped to these pads so I can play those one bar samples. Um, as you can hear, they'll play all the way through. So that's the one bar. Um, but I have it so it we assign the choke group so it'll stop. So, so it cuts off the previous one. So let's go ahead and record some chops. Then we have our clip recorded here, and this is what we recorded, and if we play it... And you can see I, I just duplicated that last slice so that it fills out to the end of the bar because it wasn't holding all the way, and I didn't like how that sounded. Thanks for the people that have asked questions about uh, some of the gear I'm using and some of the techniques and hopefully there'll be more of that. So keep asking questions. I'm going to do another beat breakdown video for the other beat that I did from last week. So stay tuned for that. And once again, thanks. See you next time.